Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. If you like making money, undervalued assets anywhere in the world, right now they're typically all commodities, uh, click subscribe, give me a thumbs up uh, for the content and leave comments below if you guys have any questions. I'm gonna go over an article. Uh, this guy interviewed John Goff, he is uh, owns a large stake in Contango, which is ticker symbol MCF. Uh, this is a video that I did um, back in October, October, November of 2020. It's a large investment. I, I'm overweight Contango in my oil uh, investments. And I want to go over this article and, and give you John Goff's opinion. John Goff is a billionaire. He's made lots, many billions in real estate, and he worked under a couple of, I think it was Richard Rainwater. I think he passed away. Um, he's also a billionaire and he was a big oil guy. So he learned a lot from Richard Rainwater and I'm gonna give you my his opinion on the current situation in oil. So he says, billionaire names oil stocks, he calls the investment opportunity of my career. And this guy's a real estate guy. So I'm gonna scroll down here. Uh, this guy's talking about a, contrarian play uh there back in 2008 when oil hit a record high of 147 a barrel a lot of talk of peak oil supply uh, we've already had passed so it says and market watchers are pushing the idea that we've uh, already passed peak oil demand Goff 65 laughs at such forecasts before the world does not need any more oil we will suffer a shortage he predicts the world may be burning nearly 10 percent less oil than the pre-pandemic 101 million barrels per day. But he says, don't mistake COVID-related weakness for a secular shift. Goff reasons that electric vehicles are still just a blip. I think there's tremendous pent-up consumer demand. People are really tired, he says, adding that workers want to get back to their offices. Oil and gas is going to come back with a vengeance. Already in Brazil, petroleum demand is above pre-coronavirus levels. Uh, so this vulture has been circling, fully convinced that with the right assets, capital structures, and incentive plans, oil companies can thrive. We're buying reserves in the ground at a big discount, Goff boasts. His primary platform is publicly traded Contango Oil and Gas, of which he owns 24%. Goff oversees the holding company as chairman, Wilkie Coiler Jr., he's CEO. Uh, in October 2019, they snapped up 160,000 acres of prime fracking land in October. Uh, Oklahoma and the Texas Panhandle for $23 million. About the same time, on the steps of an Oklahoma courthouse, they grabbed 315,000 acres from bankrupt White Star Petroleum for another $130 million. In November, they paid $58 million for 180,000 acres in Wyoming, Montana, and Texas. Goff followed that, that up by merging Contango with another small uh, oil company he controlled, Midcon Energy Partners. Assuming a conservative $45 per barrel, Contango is on track to generate in the neighborhood of $75 million in earnings after capital spending and interest payments in 2021, pumping roughly 25,000 barrels per day. So far, Wall Street hasn't credited Goff's bargain buying. Over the last 12 months, Contango stock is down 34%, while the S&P oil and gas index is off only 20% of the broader market has surged. And this, this was written in uh, February... Uh, February 9th, 2021. So it's still uh, pretty relevant. Uh, Goff intends for Contango to keep growing, but unlike during the heyday of the shale boom a decade ago, when companies seem to be drilling and fracking nearly every cow pasture in oil country, this growth will come from continuing to buy already developed cash producing assets at what he calls very, very attractive prices. Indeed, Shale 2.0 has gotten religion about needing to live within cash flow. Uh, I'm going to go down here and skip some of this stuff. Either way, it says which Goff's current Permian favorites. So he talks about other favorites outside of his uh, Contango Oil and Gas company that he owns. Uh, these are the companies that he likes. He says how to play it, oil ain't over. These frackers will have staying power and payout potential even as the world goes green. Canadian Natural Resources, CNQ, Chevron, ConocoPhillips, PDC Energy and Pioneer Natural Resources, which Richard Rainwater uh, developed this one. So that's uh, those are the ones that he likes. And they go into some of his background. Uh, Goff cautions that big oil could easily make a similar mistake as it did 
with some of the cigarette companies or tobacco companies. He points out BP, whose stock has declined 35% since last February, when he declared its attention to reinvest into renewables rather than oil. So he's a big oil guy. He says these the oil companies are making a big mistake um, going into renewables. And then here's the last statements that he has. He says, but he can't shake his preference for storing wealth in the ground and thinks that geology two miles under the Permian tumbleweeds is so rich with frackable layers of oil-bearing rock that owning acreage there, as well as part of prime parts of Oklahoma and Wyoming, will be a solid hedge against the increasing likelihood of inflation, prompted by the Fed's 72% expansion of the U.S. money supply over the past year. This can go on for a prolonged period, printing money at breakneck pace, he says. It's frightening to me. And I agree. I, I completely agree with him. And this channel is set up around finding value, obviously the name. Uh, and I agree very much with billionaire John Goff in terms of uh, oil being an excellent form of value. And precious metals, great forms of value, and all of these metals that are going to be used in ever-increasing quantities in the future, like copper, nickel, even tin, great, great, great investments. I mean, this is the stuff that we should be piling into, that I'm going to be piling into, uh, and finding value in companies that are extracting these minerals in ever greater quantities that are needed in exponential fashion when we try to ramp up renewable energy. Oil, everyone's discounting it. They discounted it too much. I think we've got great potential there. And so does he. He thinks that as well. If you guys like this content, subscribe to the channel. I don't know what you're waiting for if you haven't. Subscribe, please. Give me the thumb up. Leave comments below. Let me know what you guys think about oil as an investment. You think it's it's in the rearview mirror, or do you think there's still great potential in oil uh, for investment and value? Let me know in the comments section. And thank you for listening. This is Finding Value.